Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. <laughs> Here we are, folks. It's Tuesday. I'm gay. The cat's dead. Here we are. It's a beautiful Memorial Day out here in NYC. Let's play ball. What a day for a ball game. Let's play two. Uh-oh. Is this plugged in? I didn't see a blink. Uh, oh, there's a blink. There's oh, blinks. Oh, oh. All right, I blinking. got the blinks. It was we're a blinking. delayed blink. Yeah, yeah. And the cat's ass is already... It's like the cat knows. It immediately moves its asshole right onto the microphone. It's pulling like a full Burt Reynolds here. It's all spread out. It's it's uh, guts showing. All the nips are exposed. Have you been watching the story of late night on CNN? No, I haven't. It's pretty fun. It does. It's like one of those, the 70s and the 60s and all those talking head type of shows, but it's the whole story of late night. All right. And it's nothing we don't know, but it's fun to see all the footage and there's some weird, rare jokes and you see Joan Rivers do the thing and then Arsenio clips and Ooh. then there's like Leno, Leno on Letterman. It's, all, it's a lot of great stuff. It's really sweet. And I'm it's, in. It's pretty good. That's how you know I like comedy. We like comedy because my gal is like, oh, I love comedy. And then I put that on and she's like, she goes Cosby on me. I'm like, you say you like comedy. We're a, I'm a fucking nerd. I'll watch anything with, uh, I'll watch fucking Louis Anderson eat a sandwich. Well, that's the thing is you just, as soon as it starts, in my mind, I'm like, ah, CNN's annoying. I don't want to watch this thing. <laughs> are, and then are. you just see a clip and you're like, all right, everyone shut up. It's on, you know, because yeah. you just love those clips and you get so excited and, but don't, part of me gets so bummed because uh, you're talking about Conan and you have Letterman and Leno and the battles and the thing uh-huh. and their manager and the B. And you go, we, because of the way things have changed and gone and the decisions we've made, we can never be that. We have no chance of being a network host. No. Well, do you want to be? Yeah, you'd be pretty good at behind I mean, the desk, but that, that is I, a job, Fatty. I mean, you're out there every day looking at notes going, okay, well, we're doing the B story on, on 2468. Who do we appreciate? I mean, that the thing would be hell. But I understand the that, suit. but it's the, it's the principle that you can't. You know I what I mean? See, it's, the, I it's the classic conversation of like, you want to be a TV host? You're like, not really, but the principle. I hear you, that I if, hear you. That's because true. it's not something I'm longing to do. But if, say, uh, you know, Johnny Whippersnapper saw you or said at the Funny Bone and went, yeah. I'm the fucking president of CBS. Yep. You're what we've been looking for. Mm. We want you to take over for Dave Letterman or whoever hosted uh, Stephen Colbert, who I can't stand on that show. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you go, I want you to take over for Stephen Colbert. You're the new host. Certainly you'd think about it, but you can't you because can't. there's 500 podcasts of us saying fuck a kid, you know, it's uh, a good AIDS, point. blacks, it, it's, whatever. It's the same with a with a gal. You're like, hey, I, I, I'd I like to, not that I want to fuck her, but I have no chance. Right. The no chance, the principal. You can't fuck the principal. You got to fuck the vice. Yeah, Mr. Belding. Yes. No vice principal on Saved by the Bell. Oh, yeah. We didn't have one in my school. Do you need a vice prince? Well, the vice prince, where I come from, back in my neck of the way, the vice principal does the the uh, disciplining. disciplining. Yeah, the principal is like a figurehead. He's like a he's just a douche up front. Now I went to Catholic high, and we had a disciplinarian. There's no scarier guy on the planet than a disciplinarian. This guy was four foot one. He had a Hitler mustache, and he would always walk around doing this. His pants were never up. Uh, he always had to pull his pants. Pull. His name was Coach Hines, and if he came in, you could be a six-five black guy, quarterback, NFL, and he was like, "Oh, Mr. Hines, oh, don't don't touch me, don't hurt me, oh, Mr. Hines." Oh, jeez, he I was thought, terrifying. I thought he was black with the pants pulling up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would just hike. You know, you uh, know the hike. older guys just keep hiking them up. The pants hike. Yeah, we Take had hike. we had Edwin P. Walsh. Woo! And he was a tough guy. I mean, he was he was a, he wasn't five one or anything. I think he did a pants hike a couple times. I can't remember, but mm. he was a big son of a bitch. He was like <laughs> six four and stiff. He was one of those like 
Oh yeah, the pole up the asshole. Right, and he could—he had some beef on him. I mean, he could fuck you up and knock your head together. And then there was another one, but I can't remember because he was mine. And I got into some uh, business in my later years. Oh really? And he was scary. I mean, he was the kind of guy that would handcuff you and fuck your mother in front of you to prove sure. a point. I've seen the type and uh, I've jerked off to it. But yeah, I mean. Those guys were so scary. Edwin P. Worrell or whatever his name Walsh. is. Walsh. Walsh. That guy. That that guy better be stiff because uh, you're not going to get a fun cat with named Edwin. No. And then the, the principal was Mr. Gay. Oh, he's going to break Gay. your glasses. Oh, God. Uh, Coach Gay. Easy there, Wow. Ready. I've never seen that happen. He literally pushed it with his hand. Oh, yeah. Like he did like a... <laughs> Like he was like sliding it over like Costanza with the bill. He's a bit of a diva, this cunt. Uh, it's interesting how he moves yeah. just in the middle of the thing. You'd think he'd just whatever. He's a star fucker. He's a you know, fan of the camera. I'm trying to think of the other vice principal, but the, the, the principal, how about this? What do you think of this? The principal was also the wrestling coach. Whoa. He's like a Hall of Fame wrestling coach, Coach Gay. Coach Gay. Yeah, and I mean, and they were like a... Uh, I got a coach to get the gay out of me. He was a di- they were a dynasty. Our wrestling, we, we had wrestling track football. We were like unbelievable. Mm. And he would win to go to the championship every year, the whole thing. Ooh, talk about involved, huh? This guy's in every uh, extra curric. Well, it's so weird that your coach is the principal because my coach, Coach Black, he was a gym teacher in like the middle school, the joining town. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine seeing my coach like with a suit on. Yeah, that's it's true. Strange, especially but, a wrestling coach, because he's like, all right, put me in a half, Nelson, put your thumb yes. in my ass, check my oil, and then the next day, he's like, all right, don't be running in class or whatever. Right, but also, it's kind of a conflict of uh, anal there with the, uh, hey, the, the the star wrestler just just raped the uh, the, the teenage uh, whore here, and but we got to kick him out, but we need him on the meat. But that's the thing, I'm like... I, because there's no discipline. Maybe that's why he couldn't discipline. Because yes. he's like, you discipline because I'm too uh-huh. gay. I'm coach gay. I'm too gay. <laughs> Whoa, speaking of gay, this guy's going full mount here. Yeah, we got a yoga situation. I mean, Jesus. its back leg is up. It's licking its pussy. Wow. A cock. Man, that's a, that's a male. He's like the tool cover. This is coach gay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Man, it's, it's funny how... Just being an adult, anybody could have taken Coach Hines. I mean, this guy was, he was like uh, Danny DeVito type. Right. But just the intimidation factor was so serious with the, this guy. He was like a like a beat cop. He had a little mustache, and he was pulling the pants up, but he had, he had a fucking poker stare that'll, don't look at me after you, you know, lick the old shaft there. I mean, he just really sucked his own dick with the, uh, the absorbent tongue yeah he's putting on some lipstick over here but <laughs> I mean, he's back at it i can see the tongue <laughs> of the dick connecting Christ. wish my uh, my ex could do this we would have stayed together <laughs> this is a family show my friend <laughs> you cleaned it up on my show Ooh, animal planet just took a turn and maybe got a new hire i don't like that he's looking at me it's making me uncomfortable well you know he's got to got to focus on a visual while he uh stimulates the old pecker what do you think of this my wife has done this twice maybe i talked about this before she gave me an eye contact fart. What? Like looked in the eye and was like, uh, and you're like, wow. you can't do an eye contact fart. I don't, I don't even appreciate any fart. Yeah. Because I got I to gotta stick my, my tongue and lips and uh, thumb in that asshole. Sure, sure. The magic thumb. But uh, holy hell. I mean, that's an alpha move. It really was, and I said, I've, I've, I've disciplined you before on this eye contact. If you want to fart, because I'm not going to be one of these fucking assholes that, like, if my wife farts in front of me, I, I punch her in the face and throw her down the stairs sure. and we're divorced. Sure, Because that seems strange yeah. and uh, uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong. I don't want her to, you know, take a shit on my chest when I'm sleeping. No, the, so, the Owen Ben. No, who did that? A Renthal. There was a football player who likes a good chess shitting. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Antonio no. Brown, maybe? Or maybe that's uh, subconsciously. Is, yeah, that's two on the on the chest. Um, What's that guy's name? Not Beckham. Oh, Odell I know. Beckham? Odell, oh. Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham. Yeah, the Giants yeah. guy. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, sorry. He, he's. Uh, I think he's a number two player. Yeah, anyways... I forget what I was going to say. Oh, the right, what's the fart situation in the relationship? I caught her farting once. She apologized for a month. I wrote a letter to the congressman. She never did it again. But uh, she's a, a little lady about it. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I let one slip. I'm sorry. She bought dinner for a week. Yeah, some are ashamed. Well, Sarah didn't fart in front of me for three years, and then she crouched down like a catcher, and oh. then it just came out. It was like She was like, 
Rick Sarone and then bent her knees and just went, <laughs> and then she was what? like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Got a crouching tiger hidden deadly. But after that, it kind of just became an open, hey, every once in a while you fart. Because she'll say, God, I'm in pain. I'm sorry. I shouldn't fart. And I'll say, hey, let it out. I mean, what yeah. the fuck? We're living a life here. Sure. You, you can't. I, I think these guys that suppress their ladies' farts are, are bad people. I think it's a little toxic male and a little toxic air, but farting in front of a guy is the same as crying in front of a woman for us. Oh, you know, like maybe excellent. Maybe one or two, but uh, you do that shit every week, it's, it gets a little, little, little shifty in the gender role area. That is a brilliant analogy. I mean, you got to do something with that. Can is this I, new? Is this off that? the top of your tips? That's the dome. Right off the dome. I mean, that is big. Can I tweet it? Uh, tweet it. I mean, I've been doing this show a long your, you, you. time. I never heard any kind of wisdom like that. You're changing. Wow, man. Maybe it's the piano. Who I knows? Mean, don't get me wrong. You're good for a couple of queefs, a couple of laughs, a chuckle, a tee, a ha. I'll take a ha. But I've never heard wisdom like this. I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, this is... It still involves farting. Let's not uh, start <laughs> Stuck at each other's dicks just yet. But that's good because, well, here's where maybe it comes apart a little. Or maybe uh, it sticks. Maybe it oh sticks. Oh, God. Come, come a fart. the ladies love a cry, like you said, if it's occasional. A cage. And I suppose I could love a fart because if Sarah, we were hanging out with my niece and nephew, and she did a pull my finger and ripped one. Right. And the kids fell on the floor laughing. I'd be like, that's my God. That, yes. that was magical. Yes. So an occasional, because I know I've had a couple of big cries and my wife she's just like you're a man that's a man not yes. afraid to cry you know you you you're you're like uh, you like to fuck and yes. you know you like to watch the godfather but yes. every once in a while you'll throw a cry out there cuz you're in touch right. they love the cry if it's occasional if it's occasional and a guy cries he's going look away what well, i can't no, no, i'm sorry jesus god you need a little of that yes. but if i just went <laughs> I just stared at you. It's like the eye it's contact the eye con fart. The eye this contact. is brilliant. I you got, got something. something. Here. This is big. Uh -huh. This is big. It'll probably eat shit. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? That's got. Oh, sorry. Oh, geez. You hit Greg. The... She's going to swing at me. That was him. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I she's right the across the fucking Zoom. I mean, that's bad. Hold on. Oh, we got to do something oh, about yeah, this. Hold on. We don't sorry, want to button, sorry, but pal. we lost it's... the whole fart thing maybe there, Dickless. Oh, uh, if we lost this, forget it. That was the biggest moment of your life. All right, well, I think we're rolling. okay. It's all fur. There's like a, a spine and one rib and a nipple in there. There's nothing substantial. Now, I have to say, because this involves my wife, my wife has a bit about jerking off is, is y'all's crying, but uh -huh. I think this is different. Oh, she's God. like, we cry a lot. You guys have to jerk off to get your... That's your crying. Uh, that's a little different, but I, I, it is a cry compare. It's a little different, but this is really... Something, which I think that's also a great analogy. Yeah, that is good. But this is interesting because, and maybe it's not even a bit, but it's a hell of a piece of jizz. I'll take it. Put it on my back and my chest because uh, I need some clean material. God, I got 20 minutes on Jews, so I got to I gotta loosen up. Oh, my act is atrocious. I mean, it's literally 100% dick and shit jokes, <laughs> and it's killer stuff, but I don't have a single bit right now that doesn't have a dick or a piece of shit involved. I, I'm, I'm similar. Mine, mine more goes more controversial with uh, racism and homophobia and all that shit, and you're going all dirty, filthy potty mouth. It's nasty. So what are we going to do when uh, old Jed's a millionaire comes knocking on the Tonight Show window and goes, hey, hey, fat man, we need a, we need a five minutes. You got anything? Well, the nice thing about it is I don't even have to worry about it. You know what I mean? It's like the old Woody joke where he's like, if you see someone drowning, are you brave enough to jump in? I, of course, can't swim, so it doesn't concern oh, me. Oh, that's a good... I've never heard one that. One of my favorite jokes ever. Great joke, Woody. But... Whatever happened to him? The uh, the idea... He's a good kid. Yeah, stop Asian hate. He, he's, he definitely doesn't hate Asians. Oh, he loves them. He yeah. loves them young and related or whatever, <laughs> but allegedly. I love the guy, and uh, we'll scrub that out. But <laughs> his daughter likes him. His daughter's uh, all for him, by the way. Yeah, one of them. One of them. The good one. All right. So one what are you saying there? Some sloppy jalopy. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, oh uh, so the, if, if someone goes, hey, give us a late night submission, yes. I don't have to worry about it because I'm like, I got nothing. I can't. Uh, unless, unless it's late night with, uh, you know, fucking Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> 
I got, I got, I got zero. I mean, I, I got literally nothing but shit and dick. Uh, well, I think Peter North's got a hot show coming out soon. Maybe you can be on that. But let me ask you, could you go, hey, maybe I take dick out, I put wee-wee in, and I take poo-poo, and I put ass- asshole. I mean, can you flip and flop? I don't know. I mean, before COVID, I was trying. I think we might be out in general. I don't know. By we, I mean me. But What do you mean? Well, I said I submitted a couple things, and they went, ah, we're a little stocked up on your type right now. Oh, enough said there. Yeah, they just cracker. said, hey, we got too many people like you that are lined up. You're at the back of the line. It'll be at least a year and a half or whatever. Got so, it. So, I don't know. Not too worried about that. We'll see what happens. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Oh, I got the, uh, oh, the semen? an allergy, I think, or something. Ah, uh, yeah, the pollen out there the is cat, really cool. pollen, queefing. or maybe the reflux. I mean, I just went haywire. I was up at my parents' house. It went pizza, ice cream, pizza, ice cream. I think I gained Ooh. nine pounds. I mean, I feel like a I piece a, of shit. a pooch, as it's they say. bad news, and when I was home, I was living well. I was really eating salads mm. and, uh, you know, blowing my mother, but... The road, man. Well, that's not even the road, <laughs> but well, it, you're away. Well, this is like my family's heavy drinkers. It's stressful. Yeah. And I'm not dr- so I, I end up just eating pizza, and sometimes you got to avoid eye contact because they're telling you about Aunt Harry uh, becoming Aunt, Aunt Harry, Uncle Queef. Titty, whatever. <laughs> so it's uh, it's Uncle stressful. Titty. So you're just stress eating the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, plus your parent. I mean, I've looked in those cupboards when everyone went to bed. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> And uh, it's it's uh, Toll House, it's Pizza Roll, it's Kool Aid, it's tobacco and firearms. It's crazy in there. Plus, they got the chocolate chips on the counter, like twenty four seven. There's a I chocolate mean, chip on that counter. My wife blew up like a balloon. She looks ah. like Rosie O'Donnell hosting even at the Improv. I mean, it's ah. wild. I'm like, I'm well, pulling the, the show. You can get on finally. I'm, bull, I'm pulling Devastide, going, hey, you're gonna ruin my wife's life over here. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing but snack wells and uh, Totinos over there. I mean, I ate a gallon of ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, we literally order pizza while eating pizza. I'm not even joking. Shut like we up. have the day before is pizza, and some of us are warming up the pizza from the Linwood, yeah. and then someone goes. Well, and by someone I mean me is like we had Linwood yesterday. Why don't we get Papa Gino's? We li- I'm not even joking. We have wow. Linwood pizza over here, Papa Gino pizza, and my aunt is putting one slice on top of the other. She's <laughs> it, it's it's outside of control. It is. It's tough. If I went there for three months, I'd come back looking like uh, you know fucking uh, uh, who's the guy. The, the nose is really funny. He's fat. He's drunk. He's WC Fields. That's the guy. I look hey. like WC Fields if uh, you know he ate more pizza or something this and, really and, faded well he's a drinker so that's a tough one but i see what you're saying he's got a big honker and a and a, and a gin blossom remember when you learned that i, I learned d- it on the show from you oh hey how about that i think well, i was sitting right here it was tough for me because or fun for me because my house it was like my dad's a vegan my mom's a lesbian my brother's a goth my aunt's a, a, a antifa literally <laughs> so like it was hell because we had no soda in the house we had no juice uh, it was like a lot of brown rice, a lot of tuna, a lot of powdered milk. Oh, my God. All kind of, my, my friends would come over to my house and look at my fridge, and then I'd go, no, no, and I'd slam it shut. And they were like, was that uh, like a yogurt? And uh, what is that? It's like a half a chicken with just the, just the spine up there and uh, a lot of like, uh, you know, mixed green and uh, vinaigrette. It was very health conscious. Some some Oof. garbanzo beans and all that shit. We had no cookie, no lunchable, no nothing. Oh, that's brutal. That sounds awful, and that's child abuse. And so a is mine. Bit. A little bit. Is there anything to idea of a of a sketch? A black woman named Aunt Efa. Her name's Efa. Oh, I like that. I, I Jim Two's had a, an Aunt Tifa joke. But that makes more sense. The black the black one is funny. Ah, it stinks. It's nothing. I just thought maybe you're just everything you say today is gold, possibly. Oh no, wow. but it, <laughs> I, I mean, it could be like one of those lucky runs. We everything one, you say, I'm like I that's a bit, it. that's a sketch, that's we, a show, that's a. We should hit the craps table. Porn. Let's go to Yonkers and hit that uh, roulette while we're riding high. But yeah, I don't know. I had nothing fun in the house, so I go to your house and I'm like, wow, it's like Willy Wonka over here. And uh, I remember we went out one time. We went out to eat with your family. We went to some. Shitbox fast food place, and I, I had a miscarriage after that. It was just nothing but egg rolls and uh, calzones, as far as the eye could see. It's wild. And then they got like IPAs also. Oh, I'm like, I don't know how they're alive. I know. I, and they're stressed, and I don't think they slept since the 80s. I mean, it's 
bad news bears up there. They're all going to drop dead in one swoop at some point. Yeah, they're kind of turning purple over there. They're beefy. I, I wonder if they could they could benefit from a soul cycle or an elliptical. I'm not sure. I mean, first of all, we went bowling. We went to the oh, whole gang. We went something. to Abington Timberlanes. I'm sore, by the way, because I always got to goof around. I do the thing with the back leg points like a bowler oh yeah so, like i'm doing that and like i'm right. throwing it under my legs i'm a goof you gotta do it and now today i, I think I'm, I'm 39 and a half now so my hamstring it feels like somebody shot me in the leg i feel like yeah uh, you know the guy at the end of fargo oh yeah yeah funny looking guy yeah uh, but uh, uh, just a general sort of way it's so funny when you go back to whitman mass it's like a time machine you go back to 1971 it's bowling it's it's beer and uh and whites oh yeah it's big time it's all those things but oh but anyway some guy tweeted at me he's like i think i just saw you or your doppelganger at the, the bowling alley and i'm like oh i've been seen uh, <laughs> i want to get spotted because I'm, I'm in i'm in sweats i have ketchup on my dick and like i've <laughs> I'm like bowling under my legs and I'm pulling my That's finger. Great. That's what they want. That's what they think you're acting like. I guess so. I got bedhead. It's embarrassing. And then I got a bunch of, you know, heavyweights pounding <laughs> beers and, and stuck in wings up their ass. It's also funny that most guys are like, I'm on TMZ. I'm coming out of a whorehouse. And you're like, ah, I got busted at Rick's candle candle bowling over here by the way candle pin candle pin sucks it's I brutal. hate candle pin i don't understand the game it's big in new england everyone in new england's like you got to go it, it's what are these classic it's just mini pins yes well, the ball is tiny it's like this ah. like a softball and the pins are just like they look like my cock mm. with the red <laughs> stripe around them but it's yeah, one of these Sarah's sitting on them classic boston thing it's very boston and i love where i'm from i'm proud of where i'm from but where everyone's like ah this is the best candle pins the best if you're not going candle pin you're not even bowling and i'm like it's clearly worse yes it's clearly not as good it's, it's not even close it's bumper pool it's special needs it's like the easier version it sucks but it's harder it is harder is it harder the, the, the it's ball way you can hum it like a like a softball no it's way harder because the big ball uh, it hits and the the pins go everywhere it's that's huge true, that's true. just straight on you're automatically getting four pins if you can just get down the middle the candle pin you have it in your hand if you've never seen it or played it's like the size of a softball and you whip it. I mean, I'm like, because they have like classic bowling on the fucking classic candle oh, pin. Yeah. And it's from the 80s. He has a mustache. It's funny. And they show the guy and I'm watching. Him, he's just gunning it. So you're like, okay, you got to whip it. And you whip it. And it hits dead on straight. And I got my hands in the air because I'm like, that's a strike. Fuck all your mothers. Yeah. And it hits the one pin. because It goes flying. And there's nine pins left there. Uh, I don't understand no it. I, I get mad. I'm competitive. And so all these little kids are beating me somehow. Their bullshit ball is just rolling slow. I hate it. And it, it's inferior. I like to put my fingers in the ball. Yes. You pick out a ball. Yes. It's heavy. You throw a spin on it. Yes. It makes a big crashing noise. So you did both or you just did candle? We just did the candle pin because ah. that's what's close to me. But everyone in New England's like, it's number one. I'm going to get... I'll show you the tweets. I'll get death threats for wow. this. Wow. Holy hell. These people are crazy. And way to like give my speech about, you know, Scott Stevens being better than Bobby Orr. They, they, they throw hand grenades at your house, these people. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, let's cut it. Let's go back to the racial slurs and the epithets. All right. Sorry. Uh, but uh, I had no idea. I, I thought it was easier, so it shows my ignorance. I, we didn't have that shit down south. It was big ball, big people. No, it's very, very Boston up there. Candle pins, a big thing. And it was fun, and I liked it, but uh, I'm sorry you had to see that, whoever saw me. I had buffalo sauce all up my face. That's what they want. That's what they want. It's like seeing me falling out of a bar, you know, uh, <laughs> vomiting on myself with a boner. They're like, ah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I get seen at a, eating a salad, and people are like, "Ah, oh, what a fucking loser! He's a he's a fraud." Yep. Now let, let me throw this at you because we're talking about eating horribly. I was just in Spokane, Washington. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy, what a culture shock that! I mean, it's the exact opposite corner of the country, and uh, you know, beautiful skies, sunny days, good weather. But man, it is just honky methville and brick buildings <laughs> lower than two stories. And Gonzaga, right? Oh, you got Gonzaga's Gonzaga's you got over that. there. That you seems got like that. fun. But, man, it is wild. I mean, it's like the Walking Dead out there. Just white guys with mustaches and beards with a trucker hat on. Like, a not a cool guy trucker hat. Like, I trucker. Right. And, uh, Sounds worst, like an app. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> worst app ever. Oh, all right. But, yeah, uh, man, but we sold out a couple shows. But the green room, the guy who runs it is a comic, or he was a comic or whatever. So he's like, 
He's got the best green rooms in America. He has a light on the wall. Gets the server to come oh, in. Oh, nice. That's Adam, right? Yes. Yes. And then when the, when you're done with a, the server, you go and turn it off. So you're never going, where is that skank? What are we right. doing here? I haven't eaten in two weeks. I'm hungover. I'm gay. Let's get a cheeseburger in here. That's big. I only did that gig one time, but I was only in town for like five hours or something. Ah, uh, but then he's got a couple. He's got Bricktown. He's got Appleton. He's got uh, Tacoma. So, right. And they're all great, but the green room has a chest of drawers, and you go, ooh, and each drawer has a different candy. Yes, so love you, a candy drawer. You spend the whole weekend going, oh, Reese's, Twizzler, Gummy Bear, Hershey Kiss. <laughs> you feel like this is what killed Ralphie Bay. No, he's got the best, and he's got the video game, the arcade yes! game, the Tacoma, the whole thing. Yes, yes. So, yeah, just great weekends, uh, great, great shows. And uh, But I got to say, now this is where you come in. Oh, boy. 10 a.m. flight out of JFK. Getting to Spokane now is a nightmare. These flights, the COVID, the United, it's all shit the bed. Yeah, and we're like back. So everything's packed and full, the whole thing. I just drove back, traffic up my ass. Yeah, so I had a real, real cluster snafu. So I go, all right, 10 a.m. flight, got to be there for 9. Get an Uber at 8.15, 45 minutes to get to JF. Okay, so far I'm with you. All right, I hate JF. We all hate JF, but that was the only place providing a flight to Spokane. Okay. So I go, all right, eh, it's about 8.10. Let me call the Uber. I live in New York. It should be here in three minutes or less. Oh, boy. Uber, $150. Uber is outrageous. I, I, I'll, my story, I take an Uber. It's an $85 Uber from here to my house. What? We live in the same city. Oh, my Lord. That is bananas. So I go, what? That, let me check Lyft. You know, assuming Lyft will be like 60 bucks. Lyft is 148 I go, what the hell? They're in cahoots. This whole thing's a racket. I, I, I'm not doing it. So I should have just gotten a cab. But hi- cabs are hard these days. Cabs are no, nowhere to be seen because of COVID. Uber flushed them out. No cabs. So now Uber came in, killed the cab, and then jacked it up. Yes, exactly. So I go, fuck this whole rigmarole. I'm taking the A-train. Okay. I, I'm still with you here. Okay. But here's the clinker. Yeah, you, you get your big fat luggage. I got 18 piles of merch. I got a clan hood. I got everything, a dildo. So I get down to the eight train. You know, it's a whole to do. You got to go down the stairs and everything. It's rush hour. You get the Lefferts train. Ah, uh, Lefferts. You know, <laughs> this is this is some inside New York shit. There's two train. There's two A's. One goes to Lefferts Garden. One goes to JFK. It's called the Rockaway, but it keeps coming with the Lefferts. So eventually you get the rock away. Now I've lost 11 minutes. Right. So now it's 831. Oh, boy. And I go, oh, this is not good. Finally, you get all the way out there. 8,000 crazy people come on. Every ethnicity, every size, every race, every Jew, everything. (laughs) Finally, we get to JFK. But no, it ain't JFK. It's the air train. Oh, the air train. You got to get off the train. 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 I've I've been beat by the air train before. Yes, yes. We've all been beaten. So then you got to change your card. Oh, got to get that certain air train card. Then you get on the air train. You got to wait for the air train. Now we all pile on the air. We've all met each other. We've had, we've doing a podcast. We've met each other. It's all, I'm with the same crew. It's all pipes. Yeah. Everybody with a dumb, dumb luggage on the, on the train. We've all gotten to know each other. We've blown each other. We had a relationship. It was good. We've fell in love and fell out of love we got divorced now we're on the air train i'm looking at my watch i'm like wow it's 9 15 oh my god now it's 9 15 i don't know what i was thinking and i'm just sweating i'm pouring sweat i'm going what the fuck is wrong with you you're on no sleep you, you should have just taken the uber right so i go what am i doing with my life this is horrific and I go, I'm going to miss this flight. This is the only flight to Spokane that will make it in time for the show. It's already landing at 5. The show's at 7 with a connection. There might be something you could do, though. Might be the finagle because JFK's got a lot of airlines. You might be able to get to Minneapolis, which takes you to that's whatever, true. to something. Maybe. That's, that's maybe. Possible. That's possible. But I'm like, I am going to miss this flight all because I'm a cheap cunt. What the hell's wrong with me? And then... I'm like, what if there's a line? What if there's a line? And I look at the boarding pass on my phone. 
Starts boarding at 9.28. It's 9.15. I haven't even made it to the fucking building yet. Oh, God. You know, we got a Terminal 1, Terminal 2. I'm in Terminal 4. We finally get to Terminal 4. I grab my bags. I run down the, the aisle. I, I, it turns out I'm running the wrong way. You got to go the other way. I'm pouring with sweat, and I'm just so jealous of all the fat queefs going, Woohoo! we're a little early. Let's get a Dunkin' Donuts. Let's get a croissant. I'm like, ah! That's me. You. I'm the queef. I'm jealous. I live at 6 a.m. I, I don't care. I, I camp out there. Ah, brutal. So then I'm hearing your voice in my head because I go, oh, I'm just dreading this this zigzaggy rat race of a line that goes up to security. And I go, I should have gotten the pre-check. I should have listened to him. You should do it tonight. As soon as we're done recording, I want you to go online. It's it's too late, Jerry. Just call him up. <laughs> Ask for the tickets. Just go. But don't I have to go there? You have to go and give him a thumbprint and blow a lady. But All that's right. it. I mean, it's easy. That's or next time you go to the airport, which is whatever, go an hour early, bring your passport, your birth certificate, and your whatever the fuck your bible yes whatever you're gonna take <laughs> and, and just give it to him all right it's all over jerry ah i feel like i'm losing if i do that they're winning they get me going to the airport when i don't need to go it feels like a loss but i get it i'm a, I'm a ego is not your amigo so i have clear though still got the clear in the back pocket clear is nice clear is nice luckily i get through clear whoop clear get up <laughs> get up to the lady and I go, do I have to take the bag out? I mean, the, the, the laptop out? She goes, no, no, you're good. Shoes up? No, you're good. I'm in some magic line. I can't believe it. I think she was trying to get, get fired or something. And then I put my shit on the, on the, I did something I've never done. There was some old broad, uh, like trying to take her stockings off and two in a broad, all this. And I just said, move it, coos. And I jumped in front of her and I took the thing. And then it was super awkward because the, you know, the conveyor goes, Rrr. it was going, Rrr. Rrr. Oh, I know the rit, rit, rit. And then it started going backwards. And yep. the lady goes, Reggie, what you doing back there? And he goes, oh, shit, shit. So then, but we had to wait that whole time because the coos is now looking at me like, oh, yeah, you had to cut in front of me. We're all in the same place. Finally, I go through the woo-woo, get through other side. And then I get there and there's that big gaggle of people at the at the the gate. You know, so you're like, okay, I didn't miss it. The gate gaggle. Gate gaggle. And uh, I make it. I'm pouring with sweat. And the, the lady next to me in the seat was like, Jesus Christ. But all's, all, all's well that ends anal. I watched the uh, L.A. Confidential on the plane. Had a great flight. That's a fine film. It's very confusing. But, great movie. Uh, um, yeah, that JFK can really burn you. And yeah. uh, you got to get the pre-check. And yeah. it sucks because that's happened to me before. Where you see the lift price and you go, that's outrageous. But then you go... Ah, fuck it. I'll just get it. I mean, that's I what know. I've done. I had it the other night coming back from Royersford, which is a whole story. But this AirTran situation. Oh, we got to do the ads. Oh, jeez. The, uh, <clears throat> oh, we're good. The AirTran situation. Yes. One time years ago, this is like 15 years ago, I was going to Booth Bay Harbor, Maine for 4th of July, like always. Oh, yeah. And my fa at the time, I had my dead grandfather's car, which was still like registered to my dad or something because whatever. So I got a parking ticket so they would get notified whenever uh -huh. I got a parking ticket. And I'm like, I'll give you the money or whatever. Yeah. And so they're like, I don't want you getting parked. I want you to park at the JFK garage because I don't want it in the street because it's their car. I was borrowing it, whatever. So they said, we'll pay for it. We mm. want you to park at the JFK garage. And I'm like, I don't want to park at a garage, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they're asking. It's their car. They let me have it, whatever. So... I drive this old piece of shit car yeah. to JFK, and it's one of the only flights I've ever missed. I was going to oh. Portland, Maine for gigs. The oh. Portland County Connection was there, and I was on the traffic, tons of traffic, gridlock traffic, and then you finally get to the parking lot like you, and I'm like, okay, I parked. I sh I'm going to make it. I just parked, yeah. and you realize you're at the air train, oh. and the air train is like a 20-fucking-minute ride to the yeah, airport. Yeah, if you're lucky. Totally missed the flight, and Oof. then when I got back... You know, you're just in Jamaica now. Like, your car's yes. parked in Jamaica, and this is pre-smartphones and bullshit. I didn't know where I was. I'm driving uh, around. It's fucking terrifying. Oh, my God. No GP anal. So you no just had to suck GP. it up. So I was just walking around, like, rolling down, get, getting called honky lips, the whole thing. Right, so right. fuck the air train. JFK sucks. You got to leave nine hours early. Yeah. Thank God. Wow. See, the parking should be closer to the building. That's a that's a cunt. Because the air train, you think you're there. You're not even you're not even close, Johnny. No, it's terrible. It really is like a 20-minute train ride, and it stops, and all the bullshit, and then yeah. the traffic. So Yeah. Um, All right, let, let's, let's get this. Let's, uh, let's then stick some sponsors up there. What do you, what do you got? You got uh, <laughs> Blue Blocks. Oh, oh I love Blue Blocks. This is a great new sponsor, folks. Last time we told you about how Blue Blocks' amazing sleep mask, and now we're here to tell you about their light 
filtering glasses. It is an amazing lineup they got. The Sleep Plus, you can get yourself some red lenses for true blue and green light blocking. Use after sundown. You have trouble sleeping or get anxious at night? These are for you. Look at them. Mark's displaying them right now if you're on the YouTube. Check out the YouTube. Subscribe. Then we got your clear blue light lens filter. Blue light during the day. Cut down on headaches and eye strain. If you spend all day in front of your computer or under artificial light, they sent this one to me. I gave it to Sarah. She uses it all the time. She loves it. Plus, she looks hot in it. I love a lady with glasses. Yes. They're cool, hip, good-looking glasses. Also, the Summer Glow Yellow Lenses. That's what Mark was just showing off. This is color therapy for the winter blues. Clinically proven to lift your mood. Plus, you get all the benefits of blue light blocking. I really love these. They sent them to us. I love the computer glasses. Sarah wears it. We share them. I throw them on. Mark's showing off the yellow glasses. They got them on the cat here. They're super cool. And you just look cool with a pair of glasses on, I think. Yeah, you do. I love it. I'm a fan. They they help the eyeballs. They feel good. Support Blue Blocks because they support Tuesdays with stories. Get 20% off with code TUESDAYS at blueblocks.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X dot com slash Tuesdays for 20% off. Blueblocks.com slash Tuesdays and use code TUESDAYS for 20% off and protect those eyeballs, folks. One more ad for the Patreon. I mean, Tuesdays oh, with Stories man. Patreon is sick right now. First of all, tons of new patrons. We saw all the, uh, we don't know how to use it, but Chuck sent us all the comments. Just a pile of comments. We appreciate the nice comments and reviews. And it's a TV show, for God's sake. Yes. I mean, we got two episodes of Hot Gay Sets. That's us running all over the city, driving out to Long Beach, Long Island, home of Charlie McAvoy. Go Bruins. What a night we had here. Ian Lara makes a guest appearance. Will Sylvince is in there. Rosebud Baker is in there. Just an unbelievable episode. Chuck is really ripping it up. I mean, it's a 25-minute episode of us in the city, behind the scenes, at Chipotle, at the stand, at the cellar. You got that right. I mean, if you ever wonder what's it like being a New York comic running around, you got two sides of the coin here. We got one guy jumping around. We got one gay queefing all over town. Jokes, comedy clubs, other comedians. And we got a right-hand man just jizzing on all of it, filming it, cutting it up, making it fun, putting music. I mean, this guy is lunch. He's a talent. We got the most diverse, uh, interesting, weirdest Patreon in the biz, I think. Other people, oh, they do another rap. Come on, we got a TV show. And we got that, too. We got bonuses. We did a random bonus the other day. I came over the house. I fucked you in the ass. We yes. did a half-hour bonus on video. And you get the video a week early. I see all these people tweeting at us, writing to us, saying, why don't you release the video the same day as the podcast? We do. If you join the Patreon for a measly five, five bucks a month or whatever it is. Here, here. I think the cheapest one in town, too. Five bucks. It's a cup of coffee. You got that right. Yeah, Starbucks. They... they Jizz right in your face. It's so. less than a cup of coffee. Yeah. So anyways. No tax. Uh, so go do that. Join the Patreon today. Be one of the real gays. And uh, also get on the, uh, what do you call it? YouTube. Go subscribe to the YouTube. Watch the show on YouTube. Comment, like, uh, share, all that bullshit. Here, here. All right. Well, uh, I just want to say, I'll, I'll turn it over to you there, sister. But uh, when I got back to New York and I landed back at JFK from Spokane after the nightmarish flight I took back. I got a cab, and the cab is now the new deal. Big deal. FDR. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like I used to be like, I'll get an Uber and fuck these cabs over. They've been they've been screwing the pooch for 25 years. Now I'm the only guy in the cab. Li- Remember the cab line? I'm yes. in the line. They, they hand you that weird piece of paper for yes. no reason. And then I get in, and I'm like, hey, hey. And it was 66 bucks. Absolutely. And now I had this experience for the first time in my life. The cab line, they used to be 800 cabs lined up just yes. a sea of yellow, which was kind of beautiful in a weird way. Yes, yellow. And you sit there and wait, and then now you wait for a cab at LaGuardia. They're like, you go to the cab line, and they're like, you're like looking. You're yes. like, where is one of these guys? I waited like 15 minutes for a cab because these people have all shot themselves in the face because uh-huh. they spent $300,000 on a medallion. Yeah, you got that right. And now it's, it ain't worth shit. So it's hard times in the cab drivers. So I try to support the cabs, but they're hard to find out here. I'm looking out the window right now. I see nothing but fucking bullshit cars there's no yellow stop asian hate and i'll tell you they it's fun getting in a cab because they just trash uber the whole time like don't fuck them they rape fuck them and it's fun you get a whole ride of trash talk yeah i love trash and uber um so i might have to take one on the way home tonight because i gotta get home for the uh boston bruins playoff game playoffs you know what you gotta do is uh 
you got to get that app that tells you the next Q train, or they tell you when the trains are coming. Yeah, well, that's helpful. Sarah has it, and I should get it. I'm late on everything, including my period. But you gotta, even if it tells you, it says 14 minutes. It doesn't help you get home faster. It just lets you know I can hang out here longer, I guess. But yeah, which is nice. And you can go. I'll get a smoothie. I'll make it. You know, or whatever. That's true. That is nice. I should get it. But I, I don't have it either. But I'm, I'm I'm teaching and not preaching. I think this cat's killed. I got a clog. Listen. Oh, I hate a nose clog. Nothing worse. No, no one talks about a nose. You ever in bed going? <laughs> you got to go through the mouth like some oh, kind of Neanderthal. It's the worst, and the pollen and all the bullshit. Whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, right, what do you got? I, I mean, I've been uh, I've been screwing the the anal here. Well, so I got the Royersford gig. I, oh. In my mind, I was like, I got nothing. I got no notes. I'm an asshole. I went to hang out with my family. When I'm with my family, I'm in another planet. I'm in a pizza coma the whole week. Yes, but Could Royersford. I did Royersford, which is such a mouthful. Shout out to Soul Joel. I mean, the king. We can't blow him any more than we've already no, blown. No, he's got guy. clips of a uh, montages of us blowing him. It's insane, but. So I had the gig, and this is my, I think, fifth or sixth time doing it. So I call the big, fat, red-headed Mexican and say, hey, I don't know if you want to go do Royersford, but we keep doing it together. It's a lot of fun. What are you it's getting? A big he's, he's sitting at home in a, in, a, in a bathrobe weeping. Of course he wants to go <laughs> so, over there. So he says, sure, I'll go. He says, who are you bringing? I said, this guy, Matt Wayne. He's a hell of a whippersnapper. You're going to love him. And uh, he hated him. But And then I got um <laughs> Jordan Jensen, who's, a, who's like a, the hot young comic at the cellar over here. There you go. She's on every show. Get and then some, some fresh meat in there. Yeah. I mean, she murders, just a murderer. And uh, I said, I'm bringing her. I'm bringing Matt Wayne, who I just love. And, and Louie loved him, by the way. I'm only kidding, oh, of course. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Love M dubs. And, uh, should I play the fart? I mean, this yes, guy sent me a yes. fart. Yes, yes. It, I hope it reads. You know, sometimes you show somebody a band uh, with the vinyl. They don't get it. you got to see this fart live, I think. Oh, you'll you'll get it. Is this the speaker? This hey, is Matt Joe. Wayne. Happy Memorial Day, buddy. Here it comes. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my gosh. I mean, oh, that's a good friend. That's top-notch, next-level, grade-A flatulence. I mean, he's a vegan, so he's got the vegan farts, and uh, and he drinks beer. So you got uh, vegan and IPA. That's the kind of fart you're going to produce. I hate to see that guy's bathroom bowl. I think it's a, a big mess. I mean, he's one of these guys, you do a gig, and you say, hey, let's go meet up. And he's like, I got to hit the toilet. I'll see you in three days. Oh, uh, you see? there, All they eat is beans and pussy, these guys. <laughs> it's all vegan. But he's a great fun. We also did Mohegan Sun the week ah. before, and that was a great time. Which I, I don't even, I can't even get into that one because we don't have enough time. But that was fun, great gig. I'll just sum it up. And we went gambling together, which was really fun. The highlight of that, he went to put a twenty in the slot machine, and he there was like a lip. He put it underneath, ah. so he just stuck it all the way in there. Never sucked it up. We had to wait for a guy to come and open the whole machine. Oh, that was pretty boy. fun. You gotta hate a bad lip, bad lip, but. Um, Anyways, that was fun. Mohegan Sun was great. Shout out to those guys. Shout out to all the Tuesdays that came out. Beautiful uh, people came, hung out, the whole thing. A lot of them went and saw you the next night or the night before, which was fun. Because you were in Hartford. Oh, that, thank, yeah, thank you. That's a tough room to fill. So. There was a lot of people that were like, I saw Mark in Hartford last night. Or they were like, I'm going to see Mark tonight, which was fun. Oh, I love that. We're, we're spreading the love all over Connecticut. And Saturday night, I had a six and eight. So you could have doubled up. Ooh. You could have seen me jumped in the car and shot up to Hartford, which I think Mindy, Mindy Spring was going to do. She showed up. She was there. She doubled up. She's, she's an ultimate twos gay. The, the biggest twos. Yes. Not a coos. So that was fun. But so we do Royersford. It's me, Matt Wayne, who everyone should check out. Absolutely hilarious, hilarious. comic. Although he doesn't have an album. He doesn't have a podcast. So uh -huh. He's, He should get something going besides <laughs> farting on camera. <laughs> He's got the fart. And a great taste in music. He introduced me to White Reaper. My father's gay. So it's me, him, Jordan Jensen, and Louie. And so we meet at Louie's house. We have a nice time. We hang out. We bullshit. He plays piano for a half hour, so we're all late. Oh, God. Jump in the car. We He's sit, lonely. We sit in traffic right away. I mean, like every time, because, you know, we just, you just get in that car. It's like four o'clock, so we're just dead stop traffic. Uh. It's one of those ones. I'm always sweating it, freaking out, but... Great hang, great conversation. This is the fourth time we've done it, and every single time, pouring rain. Just Interesting. wild. The comedy gods are not a fan. 
Huge storm, so we're driving down there having a nice time, and it just the sky opens up. There's rain, there's hail, it's four inches of water, and he's got a big Land Rover or Range Rover or whatever the Rover, one of the Rovers. It'll come right over? I, I, I'm not sure, but something Grover, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> we're driving. He in that. drives. He drives. Oh, oh wow. yeah. I heard he's not the best uh, behind the wheel. He's fine. He's okay. <laughs> well, he likes to make sure you're enjoying the story, so he'll do a lot of lookovers. Oh, come on. And so I'm like, I watch the road. I, I got you. Jeez. All right. Wrote a bit about it. It never works. But anyways, we had a million laughs. Great time. Good conversation. We get down there, and it's in the big tent now. The dome. It's intense, folks. Aha. Uh-huh. And now everyone knows us so well. So everyone's like, hey, Liz, the whole thing. It's exciting. It's filled up with gays. I love it. And a lot of fans sold out. 400 just bang, packed Woo-wee. out. And it looks stormy. It was storming the way down. But now it's not stormy so bad. Dangerous. Looks a little less rainy. We stopped. We were actually early this time, a little bit. So we stopped. Wegmans got my chocolate chip cookie. I can never not get the chocolate chip cookie at Wegmans. You're hooked. An addict. Best cookies in the world. Get down there. We see Mike Pond. Say hi to uh, Joel. Yeah, he's yep. got. He gets us sandwiches. The whole thing. Great oh, gig. That's nice. So the host was, uh, fuck. What's his name? Garrity. Brendan. Brendan Donegal. Wow. Brendan Donegal, I believe. Irish. Yes. Tiny cock. Um, <laughs> big twos gay. I think his name's Brendan Donegal. I hope I'm not fucking that up. He hosts. Great comic. Great guy. Usually it's James Matter. Yep, so I was a little yep. skeptical. Yep. He kills. Matt Wayne goes up first. Kills. I'm dying laughing. This guy makes me laugh so goddamn hard. Matt Wayne's hard. hilarious. One of my favorites. He laughs. Jordan goes up and just murder. I mean, like, kills so hard that you're All like, right. fuck this. I, I want you to do a new bit. End with a new bit because they're, they're, they're howling. Now, let, let, me, let me throw this in your, your, your rectum and see if it makes a noise. Sure. I do you have this? Mm-hmm. It's your gig every time at the at the Soul Joel, much like mine. We bring people. The guy who goes first is always a as a it kills me. That's always a pain in my twat. You know, like the who's going first, and then they all look at me, and none of them want to go first. Right, and then you got to do this weird power dynamic and hierarchy thing where you're like, well, he's been doing it forty years, but you're stronger than him, and you're a girl, and I don't know what's going on. You're well, black. What's great Guilt. about Wayne is. He wants to go first. Oh, he's like, I'll okay. go first. He's like, I like to get it out of the way. Oh, he wants to enjoy huge. himself. That's he wants huge. to get it up, get it out of the way, and just sit back and enjoy the show. Interesting. So that was nice. That's a load on my ass. But um, this Jensen, I mean, she's the real deal. Murder. I mean, the people are like dying. It was like a black room. People were like, oh, Woo! God, they're falling over each other. It was like she was tossing hand grenades in there. There's a part of me that's like, oh, my God, I'm fucked because they've seen me every fucking three hours. These yeah, people. yeah, yeah, same. Meanwhile, you're I'm act. ripping through the notebook being like, is this anything? Right. And the, you know that you feeling when you're just looking around? You're like, is that something? Maybe the light bulbs? Maybe the, the yes, wind? Is that yes. anything? What's the deal with wind? So are you putting the uh, the bald guy on after? Or are you you closing? No, I'm, no, he's closing. Oh, because we advertised him the, I the see. morning of. They said, "Hey, and Louis coming." Plus, we kept being like special guests, and on the show, this show, we kept I going, see. "Hey, you know who's coming?" Right, right, right. In your face or whatever. So she goes up, kills. I go up, but the crowd is so hot. They're, They're so supportive. They're the best. They love us. They start a riff and raff and the whole thing. It's killing. But then, right in the middle of my set. Palestine? Lightning. Ah. It just goes insane. Worse. I mean, it goes insane. I mean, the apartheid's have turned. Oh, God. It's just bang. I mean, the sky is lighting up, strobe light, wind, as bad a storm as you can get. Oh. It's like. Wow. And I'm like, and I see in the back shadows, everyone's scattering because they're getting soaked back there. Oh, Because the yeah. rain, the rain from out there is blowing all the uh, way up at me. It was like Woodstock, 69 and 99 or 94, right. whichever one was the big stormy one. The cat's touching me. Oh, God, careful. I mean, it was a storm and I was like, should we stop the show? Do you guys want to move somewhere? Can we get them tarps? Right. We have tarps. And then I'm like, am I going to get killed? I'm holding an electrical microphone. Uh-huh. I mean, it was like just lighting up strobe light. And then it got so loud because it's a tent. So it was literally like, <laughs> you couldn't oh, believe boy. it. And I, I just kind of stretched and riffed and raft. Holy shit. Oh, boy. Talking about stretching. And uh, I went on for about 35 minutes. I was like trying to do bits. I literally, at one point, you're like, these aren't even, have no chance of working. Oh, get on the oh, fucking Zoom. Oh, jeez. Right on the Zoom, you queef. The cat is on the Zoom, folks. <laughs> Let me try to pull it. There you go. There we go. All right. You're good. The cat cat's toy. confused. He's like, why are you moving me? 
Um, anyways, Maybe it's huge, warm. huge storm. Did about 35 minutes for the people. Yeah. And I tried to just kill all the time because I know we got Louie coming up right. next. So right. at this point, I'm like, this is like we're co-headlining or whatever. But I'm like, let me just get through this storm because, you know, big storms move fast typically. Sure. And uh, But it was wild. It was memorable because some lady's like, I got to piss. And I was like, you can just piss. What am I, an eighth grade teacher? That was fun. That kind of <laughs> laugh and that kind of stuff. <laughs> These people are soaked. And this guy's yelling out. It was pretty rowdy and weird and wild and just memorable. Brought up Louie. The storm completely dissipated. Totally passed. I right just, as he walks up. He's, they're a fan. God's a fan. So I'm getting blown in the back. Everyone's like, that was such a pro. You're such a pro. That was amazing. You killed it all. Now he's there. And then four minutes in, the train uh, comes. I got the train and set. And it's the freight train. It's the longest train. You've had it. I mean, yeah, 20 yeah. straight minutes. And he, yeah. he could tell he was mad. He was like, shut the fuck up. Uh, and that was killing. But it never stopped. And then right when that train passed, Another train coming the opposite direction. Ah! He got double train set, but wow. he killed. I mean, it was just a special night. And then they held the ice cream place. They called him up. They're like, hey, we got Louis in town. They're like, I know about Louis. Wow. We know he's in town. Because it's I such a that. small town. Yes. And, we've, and every time he gives them like a thousand bucks or whatever. It's Mayberry. So they keep the place open for us. We jump in the car. We run out. We're driving through the crowd. Everybody's waving. I felt like RFK on the train, except I could see them. <laughs> right. And everyone's saluting us and thumbs up and everything. We went straight to the ice cream place, handles. And then, you know, he's a vegan and she's dieting or something. So they didn't uh, even get ice cream. Ah, so. uh, you can get vegan ice. I, I don't know what goes on with the ice cream. I don't either. But uh, so we ate the ice cream, went home. Then he drops me at in the, this area near you. And I go, I'm going to get an Uber. And that's 12 o'clock. And I, I go to the, I'm like, I'll go to the VU. Michael Che's over there and Rosebud Baker and Andy Haynes. And then Greg Stone comes up the stairs. Hey. I go, Stoney, my boy, my man, my main cheese. I go, hey, you want to ride home right now? And he's like, sure. I'm like, right now. He's like, yeah. I go, get in this Uber. He jumps in the Uber. It's $85, which is batshit crazy, but I just made some pretty fucking sweet cake. You got that right. Thank you, Joel. Jump in the Uber. We catch up. We tell the stories. We sum up the night. Get dropped off at my house because that's the Uber. And so Greg goes, I'll just walk from here. We get off. We're chatting on the sidewalk. I see a light. I look in. It's Steve Rogers and Caitlin Palufo. Oh, they live on. here now. You're in a small town. So I look in the window, and Steve goes, Whoa. He waves me in. Me and Greg go meet up with Steve and Caitlin. I text Sarah. I go, Get over here. So now the five of us ah. impromptu hang in the house with the cat, the whole thing. Ah, it's a party. It's a party. Then I felt bad because Sarah and I went back to our apartment, and Greg hung behind, and I was like, Oh, good luck. He's yours now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we had a great time. I mean, I just, I love Stone. I love Steve. I love Caitlin. I love Sarah. So we're all in there impromptu, one night. o'clock in the morning. What and, a world you've built. And by the way, the neighbor thing is great because I heard clunking in the backyard the other day and I opened the thing. Steve Rogers has got his huge cock. He's getting some sun. And I say, hey, Steve, I'm watching Ace Ventura in here. He goes, what? He climbed through the window <laughs> like fucking Vinny. And we sit down. We watch Ace Ventura. When's the last time you watched a movie with the dude? It's, I don't know, 88? It's been a while. I mean, we're having laughs. And then the next day, because uh, Ron and I talked about Jim Carrey on our other podcast. So I, I ring the doorbell. I go, I got Dumb and Dumber cooking. He's like, I'll be right over. Wow. I love a neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You got Kramer over there. You got the K-Man. It's so exciting. Oh, yeah. He hates the N-words, the whole thing. But <laughs> it's, it's so fun. Just kidding. He's a great guy. He's got a huge dick. Like the N word, so, yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> great time. So we got Steve's over there, and and then today they're having a little cookout in the backyard. Bunch of bullshit openers that suck, and uh, great time. <laughs> well, his dicks bigger than them sausages on the grill there. <laughs> um, What's that from? Me, myself, and Irene. Yeah, another Jim Carrey when he was still great. My grandmother's half Italian. Uh, <laughs> Best line of the <laughs> film. It's great. Wow, what a what a that's a beautiful hang with with multiple layers of hang. You got the Royersford hang, you got the cellar hang, and then you got the Astoria hang, and then you hang yourself. A lot of hangs, great hangs, but uh, yeah, they're using the, our backyard. You got to come over sometime. We got a they got a setup. They bought a picnic table Ooh, and the whole thing. So they got the yard though. Well, it's it's a joint yard, but they just like. Did something with it. My thing is, I see. You know how we are. You know how we talk. I mean, people hear how we talk on the show. Ah, got. Can you. you imagine what we talk like off air? So New York City's a tough place to really have a hang because you're in the True. backyard and there's 300 windows around. Right. I gotta buy a house in Western Mass in the Berkshires with no one within 50 miles. You got that right. So we can really let loose and joke. 
All jokes. All jokes, but you're right. But I think we're opening the door a little bit because I'll, I'll do a little meet and greet and sell some some T-shirts and butt plugs, and then people go, like, hey, what's shaking, fatty? And they're like, oh, they call me fatty. And I'm like, oh, man, this is, I'm calling strangers fat. This it's, is great. It's a nice time. It's it's good and fun. So. It's a slippery slope, but yeah, yeah, fun oh times. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, good times. And uh, now let me let me tell you about the highlight of my life. On I, I, I'm all flights on this one. I feel bad. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of airport stuff. But this is the highlight of my life on an airport. All right, in an airport. Five forty-eight a.m. flight. Oof. That's not a pickup. That's not a boarding. Oof. That is when the flight takes off. It's this West Coast business because you're behind the eight ball. Yes, yes. I got to do blow just to stay up. So you got to get there at 448. So you got to leave the apartment at 415 or whatever the hell it is. So I woke up at 350 in the morning. Oh. Now, this is after doing two sold-out shows, selling merch, and having a couple of cocktails and eating 1,000 pounds of candy. Mm. So... I go home, I'm just laying there, come on, sleep, sleep. You think about every childhood, molestation, everything. Sure. And finally I doze up. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, let's now here's the here's the clinker. I do a scheduled Uber. Yes, that's good. I was that's gonna mention big. that earlier. That's big. That's a new introduction in my life. So that's that's a, a anxiety killer. You're just like, all right, I can just you know rest easy. But that's still bad because you still have the anxiety that they're not gonna show up. I know. It I says know. approximately and the whole thing. And the only thing that does is the next morning it calls them. Oh. Uh, I think. I don't know. I think they lock it in. But it says in the morning, it says looking for Ubers. Oh, does I've it? I've seen that happen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, that also gives me anxiety. But any jizz. But it's one of those things where I probably got an hour of sleep, hour and a half. And it's one of those, you're, you're not even tired. You're just on another planet. Exactly. It's a different thing. It's a different existence. You're just like, whoa, what's going on? Who are you? Who am I? What is Earth? What is life? You know, that whole bullshit. And I get in the Uber and I go, uh, are you starting? Are you ending? He's like, oh, I've been up all night. I always ask that. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. A big fat guy. And he was like, you know, you know when you you do some mushrooms or something and you're like, is this real? Is it is it with the world normally like this or am I uh, fucked up or what's going on? The guy goes, uh, I only wear the mask because I don't know if you care. And I'm right. like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, think I was getting real chubby and it was real late and weird. The whole thing was weird. He was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. And we get to the airport Get through security. There's nobody there. It's all eerie. Get to my gate. Flight's delayed. Oh, boy. Then you start thinking, well, I'm connect. I'm connecting in Spokane to Seattle, which is like an eight-second flight. I hate going backwards. I know. And then you got to go across the country. But at least you can just suffer through the first one then sleep on the second. That's my goal. Right. So I'm like, all right, but now it's delayed. So I go up to the lady, and now it's really pushing it. We're up against it of, like, I might miss my connection. And she goes, yeah, this is not looking good. You might miss your connection. What you want to do is get on that flight right there, and it's already boarding. It's going to Salt Lake City. Get on that. It'll get you to JFK half an hour later. I was like, that's great. So I hightail it over there. Get on it. Best moment ever. You know when you, you go, boop, you, you slide your phone in or, or scan it. Sure. And then the new ticket comes up. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, what's better than I that? The new tick, the little paper. The little paper, yeah. yeah. Boop, boop. So you grab that little nugget, that little cutie, put it in the pocket. It's always a better seat. Sure. You get on. I get in, and there's a guy next to me with the window shade open. It is a 6 a.m. flight. Mm. We're all hungover. We're all mm. gay. We're all miserable. I mean, that sun is... Beaming like the 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 light from heaven. Yeah. And I go, what are you doing? I'm just thinking like we're all like one guy's got a sleep mask on, one guy's doing heroin. We're all just trying to go to bed, and this guy's reading the Torah and just going, Woo, and he's got the window. And the, here's the thing about the window shade. This is the biggest problem in my life. It's it's right here. So you sit here and it just Yes. It just hits everybody else but you. You get a little, a little uh, ancillary light for your dumb book. And the rest of the people are melting. Well. It's like the arc opening. We're all going, ah. Here's what I'll say. Uh, give me the advocate, devil. Because I agree. I've, I've had it where that's annoying. But 
You could have got the window seat. I he know. picked the window seat because yep. he wanted the window seat. Yep. And Tacoma right. to Salt Lake City, that's a beautiful flight. I mean, that's sure. the mountain ranges. Sure. And I think I'd like to see more people looking out the window at America uh, and seeing some mountains okay. and some caves okay. and some cocks. But 6 a.m. But also... There is unwritten rules, and people want to sleep, so I get it. It's very tricky. It is. It's it is. It's tricky because... Well, I can't blame the guy. I'm just annoyed. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I get I'm, it. I'm not like you're a bad guy. It's just... That's where I got you. I, I agree, because on the one hand, it's annoying because you want to sleep, and you're like, the sun's blasting me, you fucking cunt. Right. But you can't put the hood over. Sometimes I'll go hood on and pull it all uh, the way down over my eyes. I forgot the clan. Maybe get a sleep mask or throw a t-shirt up over. Yeah. Yeah. But I do understand it's his window. He his got window. the window. It's his window. You know, and uh, but I like to look out sometimes. Another, but I don't have a window. My other argument is sometimes they're not even using it. Oh, like, he better be looking it out. He ain't looking out. If he's not looking out, then he's a piece of shit. He should die. Because if he's just reading, there's yeah. a reading light. Exactly. You can turn on the reading light. So it's like when someone asks in comedy to go on first yes. or early and then, and then they, they don't, don't leave. leave. Exactly, exactly. If, if you got the Great window analogy. down, you gotta have you gotta be doing this and taking photos and sketching or something. You gotta be using the open window, otherwise you're a piece of shit. Great analogy. No look never looked once at the scenery, the greenery, or the Japaninery. Nothing. And so I, I studied this guy. I said maybe he's looking out the window, maybe he's taking photos, maybe he's a botanist or a mountain range expert. Nothing. So I go, gah, and I'm doing, I'm passive aggressive now. I'm doing this, like trying to sleep. I'm doing that. I got the hand up to the face. I even put the, like the menu or the seat chart up to my face doing this. I'm trying to make a wall like Trump. And he's like, he, nothing, nothing. This guy's in his own world. Eventually, this is the best moment of my life. The flight attendant, cool, older black guy, you know, he's, he's given like the seat report and the, the seat belt, but he was like wrapping it and he was cool. And, uh. Whatever, he comes by and he goes, he sees me, he sees the other guy, he sees everybody going, God, we're like vampires, you're killing us. And he goes, sir, are you looking out that window? And the what? guy goes, uh, no, no. And he goes, it's so bright, do you mind closing it wow. for the other passengers? And the guy goes, oh, no, I don't care. Whoa. Closes that shade, the guy walks by me and I went, and he fist bumped me. It wow. was the best moment of my life. I couldn't sleep because I was reeling. I was sitting there going, ah! I was being showered with joy. Wow. I've noticed the flight attendants a lot nicer these days. Yeah. What is like, that? I think the COVID? companies say, hey, they're coming back. They're nervous. Could you really blow everybody? Eat out a lady? Because <laughs> I, I saw right. one. She had tits out. She was smushing what? my face. It's like yeah, the 80s. Well, I'm exaggerating a little. But still, they're really nice and friendly. <laughs> But uh, that's a beautiful moment. I love Dude, hearing that. It was a racial moment. We bonded. It was a fuck the sunlight moment. We bonded. It was beautiful. And I get that guy, too, because I've had this happen where people sit down in the middle seat. Yes. And they open the arm up so they could sit, and they mm -hmm. never put the arm back down. Ah. And I feel self-conscious pulling the arm back down. It's a divider. So I'm sitting there going, please, pull it down. I need the divider. Yes. And I've gone... After a while, I go, would you mind if I put... They're like, oh, no, no, so please. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not like they they don't want it up. They just forgot about they it. Forgot. So he's one of those guys. Again, also proving my point that if you're kind of next to the window, it's not killing you like it's killing the rest right. of us. Right. So he didn't even notice the window yeah. up, even though the beam, it was melting us. Well, he's behind the beam, like you said. So... Yes. Good stuff. Oh, my God. Mr. Beam. Uh-oh. <laughs> Um, well, we got to wrap this son of a bitch up. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, uh, I'm all over the road. I'm in Virginia Beach this weekend with Fat Chris Al and Umar Khan. I've never been. I looked it up. Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach is like a it's like a destination point. It's like a vacation spot. Oh, yeah. People go down there. Have yeah. you been? I've been to... I did it with Dave Attell. I was... What? Open, featured for Dave Attell, and there was a miscommunication. He brought Big J and Dave Smith. What? And then there was already an MC because it was a huge rigmarole. So there was an MC, then Dave Smith, then me, then Big J, then Attell. It was the Super Bowl weekend, 2012, whatever the Steeler Holy, Cardinals Super Bowl. What a fun weekend. Yeah, and my car broke down at Sears. So I ended up being late getting home for the Super Bowl. It must have been whatever year that was. Look it up. 2011, maybe? Wow. No, earlier than that. It must have been 2010. Wait, doesn't so matter. Who hosted? I think a local guy, or maybe Dave hosted. Whoa, that's wild. But I think it was the local guy because I was booked to feature and it was a whole double booking and then me and Big J and Dave ended up hooking up. But yeah, they saw Dave Smith, Big J, me, and Dave Attell. That's a hell of a weekend. night, and you guys must have really put them back. Oh, yeah. And then I remember they brought, Dave and Jay brought like a PS4, yeah, whatever it was. 
PS3, That's and they the played thing. it, and they were just smoking weed. It was one of those things where, like, if they're passing the bowl, and I'm like, and they just keep passing. <laughs> I'm not a weed guy. Right, I, I like right. weed, but they just kept. I'm like, when do we stop smoking? This? I know, I know. We got to go on. It was like 40 straight minutes, and I'm like, out of my mind. I think I blew both of them. I'm not sure. Hey, could be worse. But uh, yeah, wow, that's a hell of a. I'm, I'm excited to go. I've never been there. I'm going to hit the beach. It's summertime. Like, this is a, a hot gig. I just realized that it, you hear Virginia, you go, ah, Virginia. Right. But I, I can't wait. I hope people come by. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all, all kinds of dates. Uh, shit, I can't think of literally one right now. To uh, Dayton, uh, Toledo, Syracuse, you name it, uh, Brea, California. I'm all I'm all over the place. Well, uh, what do you got? I'm, I'm yammering. It must have been Super Bowl 2010 season, 2011 Super Bowl. Sorry, just uh, in my own head. Yes. Cardinals, Steelers. Anyways, uh, I got Des Moines Funny Bone next weekend, June 10 through 12. Come out to that. Please. I love Des Moines. I love Iowa. Yes. And then Kansas City, the Kansas City Comedy Club or the Comedy Club of Kansas City. Oh, the Comedy Club. I think that's the third week in June. I hear it's great. That's coming up in a few weeks. Check that out. Google it. Get the website. Get some tickets to that. Kansas City and Des Moines. And then this Saturday, Canner and I are bringing back the PS109 show on the Upper East. It's Ooh. a killer show. 99th Street. We haven't been able to do it in two years. Great show. Stavros is on. Giannis is on. Oh. We're, we're having anal. It's all Greek themed. I love it. So come see Stavros and Giannis. Love those guys. Haven't seen them. Well, I've seen Stavros a few times. I haven't seen Giannis since 88. I know, right? He's got a fan base. I mean, these, all these bugs guys have fans oh hell yeah the greeks are loved so yes tragedy and comedy check that out and uh check out joe and ron on we're talking about jim carrey this week we, we love but we, we, people think that we hate everybody we love jim carrey we blow the wow. movies it's ron on he's so, negative but uh anyway somebody call him pauline whale which is the funniest <laughs> line anyone's ever had but um <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, check out that podcast and uh, get on the Patreon. For God's yes, sakes, you're, you're missing, missing out, out if you're not on the Patreon. It's really, we're actually really doing it now. You got that right. It's a doozy. It's worth the money, and we actually feel good promoting it. Uh, Orlando Improv, San Antonio, Helium, uh, Philly, and Houston Improv in Tejas, Buffalo, Dayton, I said, Appleton again, Arlington Improv. Oh, yes, yeah, so we got some hot ones. Albany, uh, West Palm Beach. Comedy Connection in Rhode Island. Come on out. Get on the Patreon. Kiss your dad. Blow your uncle. Tits in your mouth. Praise Allah. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.